Welcome to the stage, Heather Pasternak. It's so good to be here. When I started stand-up, my mom would say stuff to me like, stand-up's cool, but maybe you should move on to plan B which is probably get married and have a baby. And I was just like, mom, that was plan A. <laughs> it really was. <laughs> People always ask me, they're like, how'd you get into stand up? I'm like, a lot of shit fell through. <laughs> but then I did it, I got married, I had a baby, I have a one year old. <laughs> Thank you. I love him so much. I can't believe he's one. It is crazy how time flies when you are questioning your life's choices. <laughs> it's just so much harder than I thought it would be. <laughs> Everything about it, especially breastfeeding and especially breastfeeding a newborn because newborns can barely stay awake. And let me tell you, there's nothing more humbling than whipping your tit out and just having a guy immediately fall asleep. <laughs> Like sometimes he just bites my boob, spits it out, and makes this face. <laughs> I'm just like, I'll let the chef know. <laughs> yeah, and mother's guilt is very real. Like I feel guilty about everything. I feel guilty about things that I can't even control. You know, like I feel guilty about the world he's gonna inherit. I feel guilty that I'm new at this. I feel guilty that when he woke up at 5 a.m. this morning, I said, here's your bottle, douche. <laughs> it just feels like there's no middle ground when you're a parent. Like, I either feel like it's the most amazing thing I've ever done or like I've ruined my life. <laughs> like, on any given day, I'm either telling one of my friends, like, stay single, save your money for plastic surgery. <laughs> or I'm like pulling my husband in close and whispering, kill us. <laughs> I don't know why this is important to some people, but right before I got married, my husband asked me, he was like, how many people have you been with? And I was like, why are you doing this to us? <laughs> Suddenly I just turned into Alexa. I was like, sorry, I don't know that one. <laughs> and he was trying to be so cool about it, you guys. He was like, okay, so what? So is it like 50? Is it like a hundred? <laughs> I was like, nobody knows. <laughs> I love being married to him, I do. But the longer I'm married, the more I realize marriage isn't actually a promise to stay together forever. It's just a promise to make it really hard to leave. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, you want out of this? Sure, but you have to break the news to your parents, my parents, and Blue Cross Blue Shield. <laughs> I went for my first checkup after having a baby and immediately they're like, do you want to go on birth control? Like, don't let this happen again. <laughs> and I don't know why I feel so much shame like talking about sex with my doctor. And I just imagine it's not like that for men. Like I imagine men, when you guys go to the doctor, the doctor's just like, you fuck a lot? And you're like, yeah. And then you high five with your dicks. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> I actually think the most annoying thing about being a woman is that like, no matter how successful you get, there will always be someone who says she just slept her way to the top. <laughs> yeah, and I just think that's so ridiculous because in my experience, it doesn't work. <laughs> it really doesn't. <laughs> like the only time a man has ever done anything for me is when he is trying to sleep with me, but hasn't yet. <laughs> Right? Anytime I've ever actually slept with a guy afterward, I'm always just like, hey, where'd that guy go? <laughs> While I'm bragging, I also have a sister who hates me. Thank you. Yeah, we just, we have a very contentious relationship. Uh, we always have, I think, I think she struggles with mental illness. Uh, I mean, I hope she does, otherwise she's just a bitch. <laughs> I think we all have someone like this in our family. And if you don't think you do, you are that person. 
I actually found out that she had been escorting. And when I say that on stage, sometimes someone will come up to me and be like, oh my God, like, how does that happen? How does someone get into that line of work? And honestly, like, I think it has a lot to do with our upbringing. Because we grew up in this really fucked up neighborhood right outside of Compton called Beverly Hills. <laughs> Yeah, it's just like, you know, when you grow up in a big city, you just, you grow up fast. Like, if you're a baby born in L.A., you actually get discharged from the hospital with a fake ID and a 40-year-old boyfriend. <laughs> My sister does a lot of drugs, and I get it. Drugs are fun, but to me, the most annoying thing is when people on drugs think they're enlightened. You know, the type? Like, I'll, like, run into her somewhere, and she'll be like, <gasps> I just knew you were gonna be here. I'm like, it's mom's birthday dinner. <laughs> I think the craziest drug I ever tried was probably mushrooms. Because mushrooms are just like so intense. Like the first time you do mushrooms, you're just like, am I real? <laughs> but then like the second time you do them, you're like, oh, nothing's real. <laughs> But then the 48th time you do them, you're like, I'm gonna forgive my dad. <laughs> Speaking of drugs, you should never be stoned while watching your kids. <laughs> Question mark. <laughs> Exclamation point. <laughs> da, da, da. No, I definitely know. I'm just making sure you guys know that because I definitely know that. Um, but I do think it's messed up how societally, like we're so accepting of wine moms, but not so much of weed moms. Yeah, yeah and I was like, why is that, right? So I have a theory. I think it's just because wine moms have all these fun sayings, you know, like rosé all day. <laughs> But it's like, weed moms have fun sayings too. Like, what? No, I'm not high. <laughs> you gonna finish that string cheese, Mason? <laughs> no, it's not that different. It's like, wine moms will send their kids to school with like lunches full of charcuterie and olives. And weed moms are just like, I hope I pack the right gummies. <laughs> You know, it's like, wine moms will like drunk drive their kids to school. Like, weed moms will wait for stop signs to turn green. <laughs> I do, I identify as a weed mom. My pronouns are she high. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can actually tell uh, which kids have weed moms just by talking to the kids, you know, it's like, Oh, your name's Bodhi, and someone was supposed to pick you up four hours ago? <laughs> I do get a little nervous, though, because I'm like, one day he's going to be old enough to like go to high school, he's going to like smell weed for the first time, and I'm just like, ugh, you know, he's going to come home, and he's just going to be like, wait, Mom, are you cool as shit? <laughs> Yeah, and it, it's hard to keep the romance alive, you know, after having a baby. It's like, like the most romantic thing my husband could do for me would be to like give me a foot rub. And the most romantic thing I could do for him would be to like take the baby and disappear for 15 years. <laughs> but I'm trying, I'm trying to keep it sexy. Like I said to him the other night, I was like, how come you never send me dick pics anymore? And he was like, I never sent you dick pics. <laughs> We got into this drunken fight the other night where I was the only drunk one. Um, it was just, it was like one of those, it was like a perfect storm. Like we were waiting to be seated somewhere and I turned to him and I was like, it really hurts my feelings went, but then the host came to seat us. So he turned to me and he was like, chill. <laughs> Every woman knows when a man says chill, it's time to make a scene. And I think my favorite thing about being a woman is all you have to do to make a scene, quietly cry at a restaurant. <laughs> Occasionally, you just have to say something like, no, you're drunk! <laughs> <laughs>
we actually get into a lot of fights about like decision making, you know, because I want to be in a partnership. I want to contribute. I want to have some input. That makes my husband feel undermined. And it's just so crazy because I always thought like I'd have to do all this kinky stuff to keep my husband interested, but it turns out his actual fantasy is just him picking a driving route without me second guessing it. <laughs> and if I really want to make him come when we get there, I just have to be like, my husband is a good fast driver. <laughs> say that I have a higher sex drive than him, but I would say we have different turn-ons, okay? Like when I get sad or depressed, I want to have sex and make myself feel better. But when he gets sad or depressed, he gets too sad to have sex. My single friends will say stuff to me like, you're married, you can have sex whenever you want. Like as if it's like as easy as deciding if you're going to go to a bar and get a beer. But it's more like, is the one bar I can go to open tonight? <laughs> And does it feel good enough about itself to serve drinks? <laughs> I just think it's messed up that women have our sexual peak in our 30s and men have it when they're 18. Like, it's just bad design. It's kind of like how there are always more hot dog buns in the bag than there are dicks at my husband's bar. <laughs> So now I'm watching all my friends get married and I've just been like, I've been kind of annoyed because at weddings I keep noticing that at every wedding, some point, some guy gets up to give a speech about the groom and the undertone of the speech is always like, I don't know how this disgusting horn dog buffoon ended up with such an amazing queen. <laughs> And I know it's meant to be like a compliment to the woman, but I just think it's so weird how dudes will like trash each other at their weddings, you know? Like women would never do this. Like, can you imagine if we did? <laughs> I just feel like, Jessica, you're obviously the dumbest bitch in this friend group. <laughs> when I think back to all those nights you used to roofie yourself and go home with the entire lacrosse team, I'm just gonna say butt sluts 2012. If you know, you know. I've been trying to love my post baby body. That's what we're all doing. Radical self love. Thank you. I'm working on it. You know, to be honest, I feel sexy. I like how I look naked. I just wish I could forget how I used to look naked. But it's hard because so many men have so many pictures. And like before having my baby, I read all this scary stuff online. It was like, your vagina will never be the same. But like now after having a baby, I'm like, yeah, you know what? My vagina will never be the same because what used to be a theme park for soulless DJs is now a portal to another dimension. Thank you. And you know what? The vagina is a muscle in the body, just like any other. You can strengthen it, you can work on it, you can get it back to where it used to be, but it does take time and it does take effort. And if I'm being honest, things have become a lot queefier. <laughs> it's like every time I have sex, my vagina feels the need after to just be like, help. <laughs> confusing being a woman like just on an anatomical level you know like I'm pretty sure every woman had that moment where you're like 12 or whatever you're like finally old enough to take a hand mirror down there and you're just like this can't be right <laughs> what even is that <laughs> it's literally different every time I look at it <laughs> My husband heard me say that and he was like, that's not true. And I was like, yes, it is. I don't even think you could pick my vagina out of a lineup. <laughs> a vagina, if you will. <laughs> and he was like, I could and I'll prove it. Take a picture, get all your friends to take pictures. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful night. Keep it going for Heather and her queefy vagina!